let's okay. pick up where we stopped off because when Richard came on, he was last. He was like, "Oh yeah, I'll talk to you." And I, I don't think any of us fully internalized how big of the news it was because you had just left Cradle of Filth. We were your first interview, which, by the way, makes us feel warm and fuzzy inside. What was it like after you got off the show? Because I have to tell you, my Google feed blew up so much with you and us that I had to unfollow everything to do with us. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. And in, in all honesty, I think I was maybe too honest. Impossible. If that's, a, if that's a thing. And um, yeah. It got very interesting for a while. People taking like little bits of the interview, taking it out of context, or even putting it in the right context and turning it into a bigger thing than what it was, and all this kind of stuff. So it got a pre- bit interesting in about a week following the. Uh, it's called media, dude. One. Exactly. What does Richard think about Pantera? And now we'll get blabbermouth all over us. <laughs> even if we don't even talk about it. The very fact you've just said that. Richard Shaw doesn't want to like, talk about Pantera. That's the headline. Yeah, exactly. That's how it works. <laughs> Got to get those advertising dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm actually curious. So, you know, like we said, after our last episode, there was a bunch of quotes and stuff and, and the, the blogosphere and, and all the metal news kind of went nuts there. But, but honestly, how long did that last for? Yeah, it was probably about two days yeah. where I kept getting tagged in things and even pages I follow, there's my face next to Danny's. I'm like, oh god, that's that's awkward. <laughs> and uh yeah, obviously things get back to the band and all this kind of stuff. So it it, it was kind of that kind of thing where it got a bit dramatic for a little while after that, where it was like, okay, now that everything's died down. I'm starting to hear what people may have heard mm-hmm. <laughs> like from people it may have affected, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So uh, you're kind of thinking, oh, man, maybe I was a bit too honest and stuff. But, 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 but then again, it's like, well, it's not my problem anymore. Were we talking <laughs> about you leaving Cradle of Filth or the fact that you, you are with Mark – um, where it says that men only dress up with like makeup and play sweep arpeggios uh, for other men or something like that. There's a really cool article about you guys that oh, black metal people yeah. <laughs> only impress other men. I, I forgot I, I, about I was that. So, that was my favorite article of the year is that it's a picture <laughs> of Richard and Marek on the cover of Metal Injection. And it says people only dress up in black metal costume and, uh, to impress other black metal guitarists. And I, uh, I thought that was great. Well, it's it's true. You know, that's the only reason we do it. We don't do it for the music. Uh, we don't do it for the money. We don't. We just want to impress other guys. No, I, don't, I don't. that's why. That's why I found the whole thing hilarious. Like, I, I actually know the guy who posted it originally, and I just messaged him. Was like, dude, <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> like, did you have to use? Me and Marek, really? And he was like, I thought you'd find it funny. I was like, I do, but, you know, <laughs> context is everything. Come on. <laughs> like, like, but uh, we had a good laugh about it. And again, that lasted all of a day. What do you think of Pantera? Uh, yeah, what, what do I think? It's like, what does Corey Taylor think? Like, it, If it becomes a, uh, what does Richard Shaw think? That, that could have been a hot topic for a little while. Well, let's see. Let's see. What, what does the guy that wears makeup for other dudes think about Pantera's reunion? Which, Where's by the makeup? way, is a tribute. Yeah. I, see, I, I love Pantera. They're one of my all-time favorite metal bands ever. And I have no problem with the tribute. And there you have it. In the words of Richard Shaw. Surely that cannot be taken out of context. I, I don't, because the way I see it, I'm one of those unlucky fellows who never got to see Pantera, despite being one of my all-time favorite bands. I never had the chance. By the time I got really into Pantera, they very rarely toured the UK. And when they did, it was more like a festival show, and I was still relatively young to go to festivals. Um. So in 2004, when such tragedies happened, I was like 19 thinking, well, that's it. I'll never hear these songs live ever again, unless it's by a shitty cover band. But, you know, this is the next closest thing. In the same way that I'm a huge Queen fan, and I was one when Freddie, well, when Queen stopped touring, I was one year 
old. So there was no chance I was ever going to get to see Queen. So when they came back with Paul Rogers and then again with Adam Lambert, I was like, well, at least I get to hear these songs performed with some of the guys in the band. So that's the way I see the Pantera trip. Well, they call Queen and Adam Lambert or Queen and Paul Rogers. And that's because, I mean, the most unmistakable part of a band for the most part is the vocalist. So you can't replace Freddie Mercury. So they say Queen and Adam Lambert. But let mm. me ask you this. If Brian May had died and Freddie Mercury was up there at 60-something years old or what have you, singing... <laughs> 